you, thank you for choosing to worship with us here at Covenant Life. And whether you're joining here in the church building or you're joining us online, uh, we're so happy you're here. And if you're a guest with us today, we've been praying for you. And we hope that you come in expectant with what God has for you today. Would you stand with me in the house of the Lord? You know, as I thought about what I'd say in our welcome this morning to usher us into God's presence, the one word that stood out more than any other was this, rejoice. Rejoice. And it says it time and time again in the word. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. To rejoice is an expression of joy. It's an expression of peace and contentment. And it's that attitude of joy that we as Christians should always carry with us, right? The world will say, hey, be happy, pursue your happiness, chase happiness, but happiness is because of your circumstances, right? Joy is in spite of your circumstances. But here it is, we have to choose it, church. Yeah, it's, it's part of the fruit of the spirit, but we've got to choose it. Because it's contrary to what we would say, man, we've had a bad day. We've had a rough week. We woke up and our shirt's a little more wrinkly than we wanted it to be. (laughs) Choose joy. Because when we choose joy, Satan realizes he can't shake us. When we choose joy, the chains fall. When we choose joy, the walls come down. And so my encouragement, my urging for you today, church, is that in this spirit, In this place, you choose joy. No matter how you're coming in, rest in his peace. Rest in his presence. Will you join me in prayer as we enter this time of worship? God, as your people today, we choose joy. God, I pray that no matter what we're dealing with today, no matter the week we had, the morning we had, the moments leading right up to this church service that we had, God, I pray that your people choose joy, that we'd be overwhelmed by your peace and overwhelmed by your presence to the point that nothing else can stand, God, that the strategies of the enemy would fail, that the things that he's done to try to distract us, to discourage us, to dissuade us from coming into your house with hearts full of worship, God, would fail and would fall right now. Let your people choose joy today. And let us, as your word says, to rejoice in you, to know that you are our source of strength. You are our source of hope. Let the chains fall. Let the sadness dissipate. God, lift the heaviness and allow us to praise you with a smile on our faces regardless of the circumstance. God, we love you. We yearn for you. And this morning, we rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Will you thank him? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let's worship him, church.
somebody Lord we bless you today Lord you are so faithful you are worthy Lord of our praise today Lord I thank you for the things that I don't even realize that you do in my life that I don't see today Lord I want to say that I bless you for that we worship would you just take a minute right now and just thank the Lord for what he's done for you
recently is, was based in Ephesians 5. The last line, the last verse, verse 20, says making melody in your hearts to the Lord. And we had to stop the series before I got to that, but making melodies in your heart to the Lord. Here's why worship's important. This is why corporate worship's important. The songs that we sing become anthems in our lives. Y'all know that I love music. There's like a soundtrack to my life. And most of it I learned here in church. Okay? 
Shout to the Lord is one of those anthems for me. 1997. I just left my first church. It did not end well. I was hurting. I was wounded. I wanted to quit. I never wanted to go back to church. If I did, I wanted to go to a church big enough to hide in so that I never had to stand on a platform, never had to stand in the pulpit again. And this whole praise and worship thing was new to me. Quite honestly, I didn't like it. I liked choirs. I liked Southern gospel. I'd never heard of Hillsong. Never heard of Shout to the Lord. I went to a service, a Friday night fire service. They did this song. And it and it broke something open in my soul. And it's hard to explain if you weren't there. We sang this song for an hour and a half. And nobody was tired of it. Nobody. Because God just broke something open in my soul. And he poured in some healing in that moment that I needed. You need an anthem in your life. You need more than one. Because they're going to come a, there's going to come a point in your life where you're ready to quit, where you're ready to turn around and walk back the other way, whichever way you came. Where there's times when you're just ready to drop the sword, drop the shield, and just forget about it. You need an anthem in your life that God can speak into you, just bypass your brain because it's all jacked up, and speak straight into your soul. So for some of you, it's, it's an anthem from the 90s if you're my age. For some of you, it's some of the things that we just have learned in the last two months or three months. For some of you, it's great as thy faithfulness. Whatever it is, make music in your heart to the Lord. Make melody in your soul to sustain you. Not just so we can come in and sing pretty, but on Tuesday mornings and on Thursday nights, and on Saturdays, when it seems like your world's falling apart, there's something that will sustain you to the next day, to the next sunrise, where you know that the Word says His mercies are going to be new. Sometimes it's too much to think about living the rest of your life. Sometimes you just have to make it to the next sunrise, where you feel like you might have a chance to start over. So I don't know where you came from this morning, what's going on in your life. It might have been the best week of your life. It might, your, your world may have collapsed this week. I suspect most likely it's somewhere in between for most of us. This anthem is for you this morning. You're like, John, which one? Whichever one speaks to you. Whichever one helps you to make melodies in your heart to the Lord. Whichever one you can take with you on the road next week, to school next week, to work next week, whatever it is. We, we, we ask God for a lot of things. Well, I'm not going to speak for you. I ask God for a lot of things a lot of times. When's the last time you asked him for a song? When's the last time you said, God, would you give me a melody in my heart that'll sustain me through the hard times? Comes right out of the word. I think it's a prayer he'll answer. Father, I just uh, I thank you for a, a time together. And Lord, you said in, in the previous scripture, and I think it's verse 19, that we're to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among ourselves. And we know that's corporate worship. But God, I pray over this congregation today, some of whom consider me their pastor, some of whom don't yet and may never will. But as just the man of God in this place at this time, with this collection of humanity that's never been together before, it may never be in this exact uh, configuration again, God, would you give us a melody in our hearts to sustain us through the hard times? To that person who says, I never listen to music, it gets on my nerves. Would you just give them a melody in their heart? Not to disturb them or upset them, but to soothe them and calm them. And, and in that moment, draw you near and draw near to you. Because, Lord, we live in a broken world. And we need your presence now more than ever. And I pray, God, that in those moments, that those melodies will arise in our souls and instantly we're transported out of whatever situation we're in 
no matter how difficult the pain. And instantly we're standing in your presence with the assurance that everything is going to be all right. Because there's nothing that's going to happen to us that doesn't pass through your hand. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Can we do that right now? Clap our hands to the Lord and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Yes. Come on, lift it up one more time. for the night but joy comes in the morning joy comes in the morning thank you Lord thank you Lord and John why are you why are you sustaining this why are you trying to work something up listen I'm not I'm giving people who've been weeping all night a chance to find the joy that they need to get to tomorrow everybody ain't got a perfect life like you do some of us need a minute some of us need a minute in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and might. Sing, y'all. Mountains bow down.
I sing for joy in the midst of whatever you're going through. John, how do I find joy? How do I find the joy that Jordan was talking about at the beginning of service when happiness is so elusive? Sing for joy. Sing for joy. In the midst of the most ridiculous thing you've ever been, the hardest thing, the worst thing, sing for joy because the the qualities and the character of God are the same no matter what you're going through. He's still good. He's still great. He's still God, even when everything else seems like it's falling apart. That's how you find joy. In 20 years leading a church in worship, I've stood on this platform, this very spot, for 15 years leading this church in worship through some of the most horrifying things I'd ever been through in my life. And I sang for joy. Most of the people had no idea what I was going through. Because when you stand in the presence of the Lord and you sing about the qualities of the Lord, then you find joy that was not possible 10 minutes ago. That's right. Sing for joy. Sing for joy. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all, you can, if you're not going to commit to just following me around all week, then you can go sit down this time and you can be seen. your worship my goodness y'all came primed and ready to go this morning Uh, I appreciate that Uh, if this is your first time with us thank you so much for being here if you would do us a great favor out in the lobby um, we have connection cards uh, and if you would fill one of those out we would very much appreciate it just leave it with us just your name and some form of contact I'd like to reach out to you personally this this coming week to say thanks for coming and to just make a connection with you. And if there's anything that I can pray with you about, I'd like for you to share that with me. So thank you for doing that. If you're watching online or if you prefer to do it electronically, then you can do that. So you can scan the QR code uh, that's on the screen now, either here in person or online. Or you can go to the website, covenantlifewestgay.org, and click connect. And it all the same, we all go to the same place. So listen, I got a lot of, a lot of, uh, stuff going on that I need to make you aware of and a few thank yous to say Uh, so we did a work day yesterday thank you so much it was like 41 degrees when we woke up uh, and people still came and I very much appreciate it so for everyone who came yesterday uh, especially for those who were under the age of uh, 16 thank you so much for coming and and working the grounds look so much better you you can tell the the time that you invested yesterday and also thank you to those who came to the security meeting yesterday uh, to invest some time in, on your off time to just make things better for the house of the Lord. We appreciate, I really very much appreciate that. Um, now, after I said thank you for helping, I need your help. <clears throat> How you like that? We are cleaning the carpets. We're, we're, uh, we got Chad coming in this week to clean the carpets, but we need to get the chairs out of the way. So after service today, as long as people are not using them still, will you help us stack the chairs? Like don't push granny out of the seat because you got to stack them. But once Granny gets up, like take it out from behind her so she can't sit down again. Uh, so let's, let's stack the chairs and, and uh, just stack them and leave them. And we've got, a, we've got a thing that we can pull the chairs out of the way because we don't want to drag them across the carpet. Um, so if you can give us five, ten minutes to help today, that'd be great. Um, I appreciate it. Next Saturday is our uh, Egg Your Neighbors outreach. For those of you who are juvenile delinquents, that's not what you think it is. Uh, egg our neighbors is our uh, our effort of going out to the people who live right here in our community to to just again make connection with us the third time in about four or five months that we've been to their door and we just want them to know that covenant life is here for them so you come and go with us you can come help us prepare the eggs i think the kids are helping prepare some eggs this morning in kids church so if you would uh, come saturday what time coco 10 30 
10, 10 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. We'll get together and we'll go out and meet our neighbors. So um, if you would like to uh, come and go with us, by all means, bring your kids, bring the families, um, because this is a great, it's a great outreach. It's a great time. Um, if you would like eggs for your neighborhood, we will be happy to provide eggs for you to go to your neighbors too. But you need to let Corey know so we know how many to prepare, okay? So let us know, and we'll be happy to equip you to go and do that same ministry in your neighborhood, all right? Uh, I, last week I announced the ladies' tea was coming up at the end of April. Today I get to announce the ladies' tea is now full. So thank you all for responding so quickly. Uh, if, if you would like to be on a waiting list, you can see uh, Miss Heather. Heather's here in person. You can uh, wave to, uh, to Heather. Come talk to her after service, and she'll be happy to put you on the list. All right? Uh, we have a special service coming up in, uh, in well, I started to say in April, but it's April. I don't know how it got to be April so fast, but it's April. So in a few weeks, April 24th, we're going to be doing water baptism and baby dedication on the same day. So if you'd like to be a part of either of those uh, special services, and please let me know. Um, there, we have a discipleship grow group that meets every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock up in the loft. Um, there, on May 1st, their curriculum changes over to knowing your identity in Christ. So if you'd like to be a part of that new uh, series that's coming up, then there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby, and you can see uh, Cindy Diaz, uh, who in my redneck ways I call Diaz, and uh, she can give you all of the information. One last thing, book club. We have a book club here where we, do, we read books together, and then we meet and discuss those books. Uh, after pushing back the start date because of Pastor Robbie's illness, the Seal Book Club is back on. They're going to be reading Until Unity by Francis Chan. And if you haven't already gotten the book, now's the time to get it. Read the first three chapters by the end of the month, and we'll give you the date, uh, the specific date in April very, very soon. That was a lot of announcements. If you say, I don't remember anything you just said, then you're a prime candidate to sign up for the email. We will send these to your inbox every week. So uh, if you'll grab a connection card and put your email address on it and say, I want to be on the email list, we'll send all of these to you. And for like the last three or four minutes, you could have been scrolling Facebook while I was talking. And it'd be completely fine because you're going to get them tomorrow. So there you go. Listen, if you came prepared to give today in the offering, tithes or offerings, uh, thank you so much for doing that. If you're in person and would like to give, please use a giving envelope. And the giving boxes are in the back, so you can just fill out the envelope, put your gift in it, and drop it in the box at each of the exits. If you'd prefer to give electronically, we got ways for you to do that as well. Thank you so much for your continued faithfulness to give, to allow us to do what it is that God has called all of us to do collectively. All right? So listen, you're in for a treat this morning. You go ahead and get your Bibles uh, ready if you'd like. We have a special guest to, uh, to preach to us today, for us, with us. Uh, so he is, he is still special, but he is not a new face around here. Uh, and I'm going to bring up Jay in just a minute. Jay Webb is the area director for the West Metro Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, it, is a, it is a missionary organization. They don't go overseas, though I'm sure there are chapters uh, all over the world. These guys minister to our kids right here in Harrelson County. They met West Metro FCA covers Carroll and Harrelson, Heard, and Douglas counties. Do you know how many schools are in those four counties between primary, elementary, middle, and high schools? And there are 70 different huddles every week in those four counties. And there are over 4,000 students that get ministered to in our community uh, every month, 4,000. So we have been proud partners with Jay and, and Allison and all of the, uh, the FCA team uh, for many years, and we are proud to not just call them ministry partners but friends. Um, I'm always glad to see Jay. I'm always glad to hear him preach because he's always got a word, and he's always excited. Amen. So I do want to say this. Besides just being a missionary organization to the students of our community, I'm not sure that it functions this way everywhere. But in our area, Jay is their pastor 
for many of the kids in our schools. Although they really, really try to get them connected in local churches, the reality is probably more than half of the 4,000 kids who show up in huddles every month in our area don't go to church somewhere else and or don't go to the youth groups that are provided to their individual churches. That's a lot of responsibility to place on the shoulders of the few people who are members who are members of the FCA team, and so I want I, I say that to encourage you uh, to pray for the FCA team in, in the in the West Metro area because they are doing incredible things uh, for the body of Christ. All right. So with that having been said, I, would you stand to your feet for just a second, and would you welcome Jay Webb to the pulpit today? Thank you, uh, man. I got three Bibles up here right now, which means I've got a long time to preach. So y'all just buckle up. I'm going to sit these right here. for right. Get your Bible. I'm going to preach out of the Word, brother. Uh, man. Well, let me just start by saying this. Um, so far, this is not going the way it was supposed to go. Um, what's supposed to happen on this April the 3rd is that this is uh, the Sunday at the end of a spring break for one school system and the start of a spring break for another school system. And so this is what's supposed to happen. Uh, I'm supposed to be the holiday preacher, which means that there ain't supposed to be a lot of people here. And really, I'm supposed to come in and give you a word because you just don't really want to be here because everybody else is at the beach. And that ain't the way it's going. Uh, That ain't ain't what's happening today. And, man, you people came to worship today. Uh, And and I I don't know, um, man, that, see, I was supposed to come up here and, and give you something, and you were supposed to be cool. That was the holiday preacher. Let's go enjoy the rest of our break, and and all is good. And and that ain't what's happening. I'm just telling you. I'm gonna be real with you for a minute. Try not to get emotional. You guys, the Holy Spirit just gave me. In the last 30 minutes, what I needed. If I'm, if I'm honest, I was empty coming here this morning. Pastor John just said it, man. It just, sometimes we just go and go and go, and ministry is awesome. But man, the last month has just been heavy. I mean, looking right here at a funeral I had to do this month, and and just the weight of pastoring so many people, and it gets heavy. And I and I'm just being real. I'm supposed to come in here and give you something this morning, and you just gave me what I needed. I, I couldn't be more happy with, with ministry, but sometimes, man, ministry will just keep us busy. There's a difference in ministry and God. Let me just say that. There's a difference. We can be, we can be busy with ministry and never really be getting any closer to God. I don't know who that's for as much as for me as anybody else. And so I say all that to say this is not going the way it's supposed to. So thank you. Uh, this church means the world to me. Uh, y'all have been faithful supporters, encouragers, partners uh, for so many years. And uh, I am so, so, so grateful uh, for what you mean to me. And I'm going to try to get unemotional and, and give you a message. And, 
and uh, we'll see if we can't get through this thing. But uh, but thank you, Covenant Life. Thank you, Pastor John, uh, Robbie, uh, Robbie, man, you you are a rock for me. And uh, I don't know, is this the cool thing to call you now, Corey Coco? Is that right, Coco? Man, what y'all are doing up here with this worship team? Keep on keeping on, brother. Keep on keeping on. Let's give it up for Coco. Oh, my gosh. We going to church. All right. I needed that. I needed to go to church this morning. We just went. All right. Uh, so, hey, let's, uh, let's jump into this thing. Uh, man, I, I do want to share just a few numbers. Uh, uh, Pastor John hit them better. Can I start just carrying you around with me and just let you kind of ask for money and things like that and uh, share numbers and uh, that'll work. Uh, man, God, God has been good. Uh, four counties, as he said. Uh, we're up. Man, I just if I, if I just want to celebrate with you guys and let you know because y'all are partners of ours, uh, we are up just in the last year of going from 40 campuses served to 53 campuses served. So those, those high schools, middle schools, elementary schools, uh, we're up to 53 of those bad boys now. Um, uh, up from just this is what God's doing. And again, don't please don't hear me as complaining, man. Sometimes you know, you just go, and you go, and you go, and, and you look, and you look at numbers, and you're like, God, you're so good, and, and, and here's what I'm really bad at, okay? I'm, this is all free. I don't know if this is for anybody else but me, but uh, I'm, I'm really bad. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a results-driven person, and, uh, and man, I just put my head down and go, and, uh, and we, we just, and, and sometimes we don't take the pause and the breath uh, that we need to take, and so uh, I try to work on that, but man, it, the last year feels like it's just been head down and, and, uh, and going, and God is blessing, and we're growing. We're up from uh, 160 huddles to 204 uh, over the last year, so uh, that's how many served, 4,000 kids, what he said. Here's what's crazy. Uh, since last year, we've gone from eight staff to 13 staff uh, in West Georgia, and so man, all that means is just uh, more people being reached with the gospel, and uh, we are uh, local missionaries. Uh, if, you, if you listen to the new uh, local radio station, 89.1, shameless plug for them, uh, you get to hear my voice with the same recording for the last year. I probably need to go change that, but I do believe uh, that we get to go on the largest local mission field, and that's our school campuses, and man, there's some folk that need some Jesus uh, on those school campuses, and so hey, thank y'all for going with us. You may not do it every day, but man, your prayers, your financial support, your uh, just your encouragement uh, keeps us keeping on, so thank you so much. For, for FCA, uh, I am going to get to a message, and I promise I won't be, okay, I won't make that promise, um, because then I'll lie from the pulpit, and that ain't good either. So I, I'm just going to go, and we're going to see where the guy goes. For the last year, uh, FCA, we, we kind of have an annual theme every year, uh, and it just kind of, we pull from it. And, and I will say this, if, you've, if you're used to Jay Webb preaching, I threw Robbie off because he sent me uh, a message the other night. It's like, hey, I need your notes, uh, your points, and all that stuff. And I literally, I just sent him a title and two scriptures uh, and that's crazy for me because I'm usually the dude that has three, ser- three points to every sermon. They all start with the same letter. It's all good. Like, we're all, we're all well there. And it's just, that's not what God's been doing in my life here lately. I've just kind of been just pulling stuff out. And so uh, in this theme of FCA, we've been in this title, this kind of theme for the last year, Pursue, right? Pursue. Uh, we pull that from 1 Timothy 6.11. It says this, but you, man of God, but you, J. Webb, but you, you put your name in it, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, right? And so I've just been in this last year, like all of these things that I should be pursuing, that we should be pursuing. And so that's kind of where we are. Like Y'all are actually getting like I don't know, like the sixth sermon. Um, I act like I pastor a local church, and I've got this six-step, you know, six-sermon uh, series that everybody here. You didn't hear any of the first five, so I don't know why I'm telling you that, but that's what I've kind of been doing is just building off of this pursue thought, right? Uh, and so I think first, as we talk about pursue, uh, it's really important for us to get the definition of the word, right? To pursue something is to follow in order to catch, to go after something, right? 
Like if you're pursuing something, there is a goal with a pursuit. Paul says it this way, like I don't just beat at the air. Like I don't just go through life just shadow boxing with nothing. I press towards the prize, right? And so that's what we're talking about is a pursuit is something that we are trying to obtain. And every one of us are in a pursuit of something, right? I think the question is, what are we pursuing? That's the question for us, right? Uh, even for me, it's like God will convict me even this morning, like, man, it's cool to pursue ministry, but if that's all I pursue, I will be empty. So the question for us is what are we pursuing? Is it a career? Is it a status? Is it the American dream? Is it our Lord and our Savior? What are we pursuing? Here's what I know is that pursuit requires action. The moment that we stop moving is the moment that we stop pursuing. And so as we chase after God, as we pursue our Savior, man, if we find ourselves in a stagnant place, we're no longer pursuing. And so my prayer for me, my prayer for you is that we never stop moving, that every day we are getting closer to our Savior. And so this morning, in the sixth sermon of a six-part series that you'll never hear the beginning to or the end to, you just happen to get the title of Pursue Contentment. The other five, just in case you need to know, Pursue Truth, Pursue Mission, Pursue Your Calling, Pursue Worship, Pursue the Word, and today, pursue contentment. Mm, what a word, right? So we're going to be going this morning, if you have your Bibles, 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, verses 3 through 6. Uh, and we're going to talk this morning about godliness and contentment. If you're ready for that, can I get an amen? I like it. I like feedback, right? Y'all, y'all preach me a little bit harder here. Like, I, I like to go, right? Like, I mean, the more amens, the more I go, or you may not want that. You may want me to shut up, so you may sit there quiet. I don't know. But uh, I, like, I like a little feedback. So here we are in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse number 3. It says this, If anyone teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teaching that promotes godliness... He is conceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words. Mm. Woo. From these come envy, quarreling, slander, evil suspicions. I like reading from the screen. And constant disagreement among people whose minds, look, check this. This is that truth thing I just talked about. Whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth who imagine that godliness is a way to material gain, last verse, but godliness and contentment is great gain. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Uh, we thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for this time together. Uh, we thank you for your spirit that just moves among us. <laughs> God, may that not stop here. God, it does no good. If we receive it and receive it and receive it, and then we don't pursue anything when we walk out of the doors today. So God, help us to walk out these doors today, changed, filled to overflowing, so that we can go make you more famous. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's talk about this. So here's what's happening. If you go to that scripture, this, there's a group of people, okay, and not us, none of y'all, okay, not me right, who have took their eyes off of Jesus and lost pursuit of the truth. It says up there, if anyone teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? So what's happening here is they started to, listening, to listen to other people's words instead of digging in for themselves. And I want to stop right there for a minute, okay? Now listen, 
probably the greatest tragedy of my life is that for 18 years of my life, what Jesus had to say came through the pastor on Sunday mornings, and that was it. Now listen, I love John Butler. Love him. One of his biggest fans. But if the only thing you're getting is what John Butler says on Sunday mornings, you're missing out on some stuff. And so for 18 years of my life, man, I couldn't tell you what God was really saying to me through his word. It was just what the pastor was saying on Sunday mornings. And that's kind of what's happening right here is that they've lost this pursuit of the word for themselves. And all of a sudden, man, I don't know if you know this, I'm going to fail sometimes. He's going to fail sometimes. And if you're just counting on us to fill your spiritual tank, you're going to be let down. And so that's what's happening in the word right here is that, man, people have just lost this pursuit of the word for themselves. And so they start listening to these other teachings, these false doctrines, all of these things, right? And all of a sudden they find themselves kind of headed down this slippery slope, right? Like, I don't, I don't think they're bad people. Like, none of us wake up and say, you know what? I'm just going to go listen to some false doctrine today and some bad teaching, and then we're going to get into some fights and some quarrels and some evil stuff. Like, it's not what, it's not what we mean to happen, right? But, like, if we catch ourselves not constantly getting in the word for ourselves, then, then all of those things that were mentioned, envy, quarreling, slander, evil suspicions, constant disagreements that you put on Facebook. It don't say that in a word, but I just thought that was for somebody. All right. Uh, constant disagreements whose minds, here, here's where it is, depraved and deprived of the truth. And so all I'm seeing here is that, man, when, when they quit digging in the word for themselves, when we quit digging into the word for ourselves, we will find ourselves in this place that we did not mean to get to, that we just find ourselves quarreling and arguing and getting caught up in things that don't matter I mean, Lord, where are we at, world? We have been talking about a dude slapping a dude all week long. That's where we are in the world. Quarreling, disagreements, because we're finding our truth in somewhere else besides the word of God. And so we have to lock our eyes on Jesus. And when we don't lock our eyes on Jesus, we will find ourselves being deceived by the enemy. And when we're deceived and we don't have our eyes locked in, we are easy prey. Amen? And so that's all I'm saying. That has nothing to do with contentment. I'm just leading up to contentment, okay? All right? And so, man, we have to lock our eyes on Jesus, on the truth of his word. And when we get there, and we can do that, Paul then tells us that we'll find ourselves pursuing two things, right? Godliness and contentment. That's where we need to be, right, is to pursue godliness and contentment. And that's where we're going to land this morning is to say, man, how do we pursue Those two things. So first thing that we must look at is what God, it tells us right here what godliness is not. Godliness, check this, says it in the scripture right here. I'm not not changing, this is not Jay's translation. Godliness is not a way to material gains. That's what it said, that, that, that when they did want to get godly, because they had been listening, they hadn't been seeking the truth on their own, when they did want to get godly, It all of a sudden, we go, I'm going to get godly so I can get something, right? He says it. Paul says it pretty clear right here. Godliness is not a way to material gains. Godliness does not mean comfort. I'm about to read this because y'all can tell when I read somebody else's writing because it sounds a lot smarter. 
Because I just, I ain't very smart, so I just get loud and yell and energetic, and you think that I know what I'm talking about a little bit more. But I read this, and I thought it was really good, and it's way over anything that I could write. But it says this, very commonly, Christianity is presented on the basis of what you will gain by following Jesus. Personal success, happiness, a stronger family, more security, a higher salary, more scholarship offers, more friends, etc. Right? Let me say, very commonly, Christianity is presented on the basis of what you will gain by following Jesus, and that is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Paul is simply warning us here, man, do not ever confuse godliness with material gains. This is kind of what it looks like. Now, let me go. That was somebody else's writing because they're smart. Let me give you the J. Webb translation. Let's dumb it down a little bit, all right? All right, this, this is what I think it, it means. It's like it, may like, it looks like this. God, I will do this if you can just do this, right? Right? God, God, I will clean up my life. Oh, I'm on the school campus every day. Lord Jesus, we need this one. God, I will clean up my language if you'll just give me the dub. That, that means win. W. I'm preaching on the kid level right now. If, if, man, if, if, man, if you'll give us the win tonight, man, man, we're going to we're gonna practice hard next week. We're going to clean up our language. Man, God, if you'll just give me the win. If you will do this, I will do this. God, I will, now this gets a little more real. God, I'll start praying more if you'll, if you'll just heal Grandma Gladys. Now, I don't know if there's a Gladys in here. That's just a name that sounds like a grandma name. So I'm not, I'm not saying anything. That's just a name I picked. All right, I should have used Brenda because that's grandma's name. So Brenda, all right, if you'll just, God, I will start praying more if you'll heal Grandma. God, God, man, if you will just get me out of this mess, I, I'll start going to church. If you'll, God, if, man, if, man, if you can just send me, golly, we're in a financial bind, God, let me, I will start reading my Bible more. Does that make sense? That's what we do, and that's what we translate godliness to be. Is like, man, God, I will clean up a little bit if you will just do this for me. And Paul's saying, man, God has never given us, he's never promised comfort. He's never promised that, man, if we'll do this, he'll do this. Like, man, we just got to search after him and go after him. And sometimes that may be good and sometimes that may be bad, but God is not a genie in a bottle where we say, hey, I'll be godly if you'll do this. And so all I'm saying is, man, as we pursue something, let's pursue godliness. Here's what godliness is, man. I'm getting way off, all right? Godliness is being more focused on the blesser than the blessing. More focused on the creator than the created, right? That's what godliness is. It's saying, God, man, I just want to set my eyes on you. It's a pursuit of righteousness and faith and love and gentleness and moral excellence and humility and meekness, and the list can come on. But I'm just telling you, if we will lock our eyes on Jesus, godliness will ooze out. You, can, oh, you can't put some divisive post on Facebook if your eyes are locked on Jesus. I'm just saying you can't do it. And so all I'm trying to challenge you to do this morning is not get caught up in the slippery slope, the quarreling and the arguments and all of those things and just simply say, God, I want to fix my eyes on you today and let's see where that gets me. Hey, it may get you in a third world country serving in an orphanage somewhere. I don't know. It, didn't, it doesn't promise comfort, but I'm just saying lock your eyes on Jesus and godliness will ooze out. All right, that's my point one. Pursue God. It's crazy. I don't have any points. I don't know what to do because I'm usually like, that's point one. It's on the screen. Now it's point two. Uh, I, don't, I ain't doing that this morning, so I'm confused by my own self. All right, so here we go. That's godliness. Pursue godliness. It says this, but godliness with contentment. Mm contentment. What a word, right? I am going to act smart for a minute. I'm not. But we went to the original Greek for this one, Pastor John. 
watch out now. Oh, man, the original Greek word for contentment, I like saying this, it's the only reason I'm preaching it, is asterkaya. It doesn't spell like that. But I hit the little, when I'm looking in the, uh, in the Greek translation, there's a little sound, like a little volume button that you can hit, amen? Because I'm like, dude, do you want me to say that? So I hit the little blue button that looks like a little microphone thing, and it says it for me. And so when it says it, it's got this in it. Like it was, it's not like you're hocking a loogie. Um, but astakaya is what it says, right? I'm not even going to give you the spelling because then you'll think you don't even know what you're saying because it's not spelled like that at all. But the blue button that said it for me, that's how it said it. Contentment means astakaya, which means this. Self-sufficiency. Contentment equals self sufficiency. Now that sounded weird to me. It, it really did. So I got to kind of looking because that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're not just supposed to, you, you got to get to looking into it. And so I, at first I'm like self-sufficiency. That's, that's what you meant when you wrote this in the Greek was, was self-sufficiency. It just, that just sounds backwards because when I look at it, it, it sounds prideful that man, I, I could just rely on self. But, but this is what I mean. I started digging in and this is what it means, contentment. It is not a sufficiency on self alone. Hear this. This is contentment. But the understanding that everything we need can be found within us. Because that's where the Holy Spirit dwells. Let me say that one more time. Contentment. Self-sufficiency, it is not a sufficiency on self alone, but the understanding that everything we need can be found within us because that is where the Holy Spirit dwells. And so what contentment is, it, this is it. Because, it. man, we live in an America that, man, we can get uncontent real quick. This is contentment, knowing that everything you need is already within you. That's contentment. That if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, you've got all you need. I don't know what that's going to look like in the banking account. I don't know what that's going to look like in the form of a, of a promotion. I don't know what that's going to look like in the form of how many people come into the church. But what I do know is that contentment is simply saying, God, you've given me everything that I need. That is contentment. Understanding this, that contentment will never, ever, ever come from external things. External things will always leave you wanting something more. More money, bigger house, more people in the church, more likes, more status, more, more, more. That's what external things will do. But contentment says, man, God, you've given me everything that I need. Contentment is found when our heart is rooted not in external things, but in eternal things. When we get caught up in earthly things, man, we will find ourselves discontent. I love illustrations. Robbie knows this so well. My son asked me what I was doing with this this morning when I walked out of the house. I said, I'm giving it to the children's workers, and that's how they will keep y'all contained while I preach. And he looked at me with, like, he probably really thought I was going to do that. But, you know, this is uh, my rope. That was a good kick. That was good. All right. It's okay if it looks a little crazy in the middle. So I've used this illustration before in, in other ways, but... Contentment. This, this is it for me. Contentment. This red part of this rope represents our life here on earth. Now, I just did a funeral for a 15-year-old girl. That red may not go as long for some as it does others. But nevertheless, the red represents our life here on earth. The white represents eternity. I, just, I want you to get the picture. 
this is my life here on earth. This is eternity. And so many times, discontentment comes because we get so focused on this little part right here. If you want to find contentment, if you want to pursue contentment, then it's when our hearts and our minds get focused on the white. That's where we find contentment, is that when what everything that I'm doing is focused on the eternal. Everything that I'm doing says, man, God, you've given me all that I need, and I'm just going to keep chasing after you, and I don't care what the Joneses have, and I don't care what everybody else has, and I don't care the popularity or what other ministries are doing. I'm just going to focus on you because we've got to put hell out of business. That came from a 15-year-old kid the other day at Worship on the Lawn. I thought that was pretty good, right? Like, we are here to put hell out of business, and if we get so focused on this little red part, we ain't going to do it. And so, man, to be content says, man, I want to focus on the eternal. Here's another uh, one that's way smart. Uh, I got, I love, I love, if you don't do that, this is free, free of charge, Pastor John. Um, Blue, Blue Letter Bible is one of my favorite Bible apps, okay? Just, just so you know, if you really want to get in uh, to Scripture and just look at commentaries and concordance and definitions. That's where I hit that little blue button that said, Ashtakaya. All right. It's like a pirate. Um, then, then Blue Letter Bible, I challenge you, download it, read, study. But I found this study in contentment. And this comes from Clark. I don't know who Clark is. It just says Clark. It's not Webb. It's Clark. But it said this. It requires but little of this world's good goods to satisfy a man who feels himself to be a citizen of another country. Let me read that again. It requires but little of this world's goods to satisfy a man who feels himself to be a citizen of another country and knows that this is not his rest. We find contentment when we understand that we're just passing through right here that we're really just going somewhere else. That's where we find contentment is to say, man, I am just passing through, and I'm going to make you as famous as I can while I'm here on this earth, and I'm going to put hell out of business while I can here on this earth, but it's really just getting to the next place, to the final destination, to home, right? And so that is what contentment is. I'm almost done. The one thing that will make you just check this, this could be point three, uh, Robbie. I don't know where you are, but this could be point three. The one thing that will put you into discontentment quicker than anything else is comparison. Comparison. It's it's been said that that comparison is the robber of joy. That that here here's this is just real simple, right? Write this down if you take notes. Comparison equals wanting. Contentment equals trusting. Comparison equals wanting. Contentment equals trusting. Contentment just says, God, I'm going to trust you with everything that I am, that my heart is set on you, that my heart is set on eternity, that my heart is set on eternal things and not external things, and I'm just going to keep trusting in every moment, trusting you with my health, trusting you with my finances, trusting you with my kids, trusting you with my ministry. God, I'm just going to keep trusting you. I don't care what the other people are doing. I don't care what their lives look like. That's just going to make me want, 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 and that's not what you have for me. God, I'm going to trust Trust you in the middle of this contentment. Last thing, Philippians 4, 13. Probably one of the most famous scriptures in all of the word. Probably one of the most misused scriptures in all of the word. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Man, I've heard that said. Man, you be on a football field and, you know, you're running back's Four foot 11, 125 pounds, and your middle linebacker, six foot four, 260 pounds. And you're like, Lord, I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. Now, nah, you're about to get flat back, bro. Like, that's, no, nah, don't, don't be bringing God in the middle of this. No, nah, I'm just kidding. No, nah, like, 
But like it's the, it's misused. Like man, I can do all things. Man, I just man, God, I can I can do all things. God, you gonna you gonna give me that car? I can do all things. More, we're gonna get that big old house. I can do all things, man. God, man, church, man, we're gonna get to a thousand. We're gonna be a mega church. I can do all things. Like I'm not saying that all of that's wrong, but we misuse it because I think what we really have to do is read uh, Philippians 4, 11, 12, and thirteen. And this is what that says. I don't say this is Paul talking. I don't say this out of need. For I have learned to become content in whatever circumstances I find myself in. I know how to make do with little, and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance, in abundance or in need, I am able to do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And so what Paul is saying is contentment, self-sufficiency, he's saying that everything I need is already right here within me. I am able to face any circumstances, the lack, the poverty, the beatings. I, I love this when I look at Paul, man. Like, it's like this is coming from, from a guy that had been on the top of the mountain in the lowest of valleys, right? A guy that had been beaten with rods, pelted with stones, spent time in prison for preaching the gospel, shipwrecked three different times, lost at sea, and yet through it all, he knew that his strength would never come from the external things, but through the internal and eternal things. And so all I'm saying is the next time we say, I can do all things, be ready, because our all things may look different than God's all things. And so I'm just challenging you this morning to be content because God has already given you everything that you need. Godliness plus contentment equals great gain. And so, man, when we walk out these doors today, my prayer for you is that, man, you will pursue one him with everything that you are. And that you will not ever find yourself getting in this comparison game, this wanting game, this this game of, man, I got to have more. But simply saying, God, everything that I need is right here within me. And today I choose to focus on what you've put within me, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I choose to lock my eyes on you. And God, if it doesn't have anything to do with eternity, I don't want anything to do with it. Challenge yourself on that when it comes to, to, to social media and the quarrels and the, and the envy and, and the arguments. Is, is like, man, if it don't have anything to do with eternity, I don't want anything to do with it. Now, you keep watching these sports. I like that stuff. But don't get so caught up in the outcome. Team Jesus is undefeated. You know what I'm saying? And so my prayer is that you find contentment. Lord, we know that all we need is you. God, we know that all we have is because of you. And so today, God, may we find ourselves sufficient on you having plenty because of you. God, may the Holy Spirit just rise up inside of us. May we not get caught up in the things that don't matter. May we not get caught up in the external things. May we not get caught up in happiness. But God, may we get caught up in you. God, and when we are caught up in you, when we are fixed on you, when our eyes and our hearts and our minds are set on you, God, that is where we will find contentment. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.